As a fight fan, we need to embrace this because this is sensational. Because if this was boxing, we wouldn't see this. In boxing, it's hard enough getting the two heavyweight champs in a ring. I'm talking about Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. That's the fight that needs to happen. Well, here in UFC, we've got the 45 pound champ, we've got the 55 pound champ, we've got the pound for pound number one and number two. The two best fighters on planet Earth going up against one another to find out who truly is the best. In the UFC 284 main event in Perth, Australia, you have a combined record of 48 victories with two defeats. It's one of the most highly anticipated fights that the UFC has ever put on in their entire history. And not only that, it's between two of the most high-level and well-rounded fighters that have ever graced the sport of mixed martial arts. And for some reason, I feel like aside from a few days ago, this fight has not been talked about or promoted nearly enough. There's so much on the line here. The status of another champ champ inside the UFC after Conor McGregor made history at UFC 205 in Madison Square Garden, and then Daniel Cormier followed up after that. Israel Adesanya tried to do the same thing against Jan Blahovic at UFC 259, however, he was unsuccessful. And the next person who may stake the claim at doing that after Volkanovski could very well be Alex Pereira moving up to 205 pounds to avenge the loss of his training partner in Glover Teixeira. But aside from that, Volkanovski versus Mahachev is just an incredible fight all the way around. You have the heir to the Habib Nurmagomedov throne in Islam Mahachev, basically the person who was built from the ground up by Abdul Manap, Habib, and Javier Mendez, going up against one of the most well-rounded and smart fighters in the game of mixed martial arts, with probably the most impressive fight IQ that the game has ever seen. I'm talking about 25-1 Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, who's currently the UFC's featherweight champion, and his only loss in professional mixed martial arts came not just one weight class up, but two weight classes up at 170 pounds. When looking at the murderer's row of contenders that Volkanovski has laid to rest, so to speak, in the game of MMA and in the UFC alike, we're talking about the likes of Chad Mendez, Jose Aldo, Max Holloway three times, and Brian T. City Ortega. And you can't forget the Korean Zombie. And it's not the fact that he's just beating these contenders and beating these challengers to his title. It's the fact that aside from the second fight with Max Holloway, he's making it look easy and he's barely breaking a sweat. He had some trouble against Brian Ortega almost getting caught in a mounted guillotine and then a potential triangle choke. However, once he got out of it, he made Ortega pay with a barrage of ground and pound strikes. Now speaking about ground and pound, that's something that we can touch on with Islam Mahachev. The one place that Volkanovski does not want to be in this fight is on the ground against one of the most decorated grapplers and strongest fighters when it hits the mat in all of mixed martial arts and combat sports combined. If Mahachev gets Volkanovski down to the ground, he's in for a world of hurt. However, we've seen him get caught in submission attempts by Ortega, but if Mahachev puts him in those same positions, I don't believe he will be able to get out of them. However, the one thing that we can say about Volkanovski is that even when he has gotten taken down by the likes of Chad Mendez, he's able to get back up in the blink of an eye and nobody's able to hold him down. I know I'm gonna turn up on the night I know I'm going to, you know, if I am in a bad spot, I'm going to deal with it. You know what I mean? I've got the heart to get myself out of any position and come up on top. Um, I need to turn up. You know, this isn't a fight where I could just come in and, oh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I need to be on my game, uh, but I'm always on my game. You know, I always prepare how I should, and uh, you're going to see me turn up. And uh, I plan on uh, raising two belts at the end of it. I, I do think Islam gets the, the fight to the ground. I just don't see him holding down bulk. Part of the reason is because Volkanovski used to weigh upwards of 200 pounds when he played professional rugby before he made his venture over into mixed martial arts. He's more than likely, in his opinion, going to be stronger because he looks at Volkanovski as the smaller man. But Volkanovski used to weigh 220 pounds. Volkanovski is only jumping up 10 pounds. His body naturally wants to be bigger. And if you speak to him, he says that right now he is a brick wall and he is feeling twice as strong as what he ever has done. Now down at 145 pounds and more than likely walking around between 160 and 170 pounds before the weight cut, he's one of the strongest fighters built with this frame in all of mixed martial arts. And the fact that he could drop from 200 pounds to 145 
is an anomaly in and of itself, and that makes Alexander Volkanovsky not just the great, but an anomaly of mixed martial arts. However, if you speak to Mahachev's coach in Javier Mendez over from the American Kickboxing Academy, he has something to say about why he believes Islam is not just one of the best lightweights in the world, but has the potential to be the greatest lightweight champion of all time. I don't say this guy's the most well-rounded lightweight in the history of MMA for out of the champions for no reason. I'm saying it because this guy's that good everywhere. Even just to win a round against Islam is going to be very difficult for anybody to do. He's just that good. You know, that's just a fact. You know, I'm not trying to be cocky. I'm not trying to be this. It's just, he's just that good. Even though Islam's coach believes that Islam could be and is the greatest lightweight of all time and has the potential to be the greatest lightweight champion of all time, a lot of fighters and fans alike still have a lot of question marks in terms of how good Mahachev is when he faces the upper echelon of his division. The bigger question is how good is Islam? You know, and, and it's the same thing that we, we saw with Khabib. It's like how good was he as he was going up through the rankings? And although he beat Charles Oliveira, which was a step in the right direction in terms of Islam proving his greatness, if he's able to get through Volkanovski as swiftly as his other opponents, it's going to say a lot about how much Islam can accomplish in the sport before he decides to call it a career. However, the one thing we do know is that Volkanovski will never quit on himself. He has an undeniable self-belief and confidence, and that's something he's definitely going to need against a dominant fighter in the likes of Islam Mahachev. You know what I mean? So that's a uh, that's some. So even doing this and you know the underdog story. That's why I love it as well because I keep showing these people, these uh, these underdogs, these people out there that probably don't believe in themselves. They're not sure. I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show them what can be done. You know what I mean? Right now, people are counting me out. They won't s Sunday. Sunday, uh, I'm gonna shock the world, and I can't wait to do it. When it comes to the striking game, Volkanovski is going to be far and above the better striker and the more technical fighter, all in the same. However, judging off Islam's title winning performance against Charles Oliveira at UFC 280, where he dropped Oliveira with a straight left into a right hook off of a failed jump front kick attempt from Oliveira, you could see how much better Mahachev's striking has gotten from fight to fight. However, I don't necessarily feel like Islam's going to want to test the striking, even though he's mentioned that a few times in the lead up to the fight. He's going to want to get in on the hips of Alexander Volkanovsky, take him to the ground, mount him, and submit him or ground and pound his head through the mat. And we've already touched on Volkanovski's ability to get back up to his feet even if he does get taken down. However, taking Volkanovski down is a problem all in itself. I feel like the one thing we need to touch on before we wrap up everything with how great this main event is, is the fact that Volkanovski is a master of fakes, feints, and a master of focus inside the cage. You could say the same thing about Mahachev, but really, can you? because Mahachev has really dominated every fighter that he's fought. However, he's never fought a fighter the caliber of Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, while Volkanovsky has never fought a fighter the caliber of Mahachev when it comes to the grappling on the ground, aside from the submission game of Brian Ortega. However, the submissions and the grappling that Islam uses is very different. Islam is more based on pressure, positioning, and suffocation leading to the opponent giving up vulnerable positions, either leading to ground and pound or a submission. With Brian Ortega, it's more the fact of him not really shooting takedowns of his own, but going off of mistakes that the opponent makes to lock them up in a submission attempt. And that's very, very different. This fight is as high level as you could possibly get. And it has a lot of questions, but the best part about this game is the fact that for as many questions as we get, on the night, we'll have our answers. Will Islam's incredible pressure, top game, submission game, and grappling ability outshine Volkanovski and drag him into deep waters, all while strangling his chance to win the lightweight title away from him, be the case? Or will Volkanovski prove once again that he's not only one of the smartest and most focused fighters inside the cage, but that he is now the pound for pound number one and a champ champ in the process? This Saturday, we're going to have our answers, and this fight is one of the greatest fights ever made in the history of mixed martial arts. Fight of the year, fight of the decade, and everything in between, this fight can check all the boxes, because going into fight night, it checks every box that you can have as a casual or a hardcore fan. I cannot wait till tomorrow night. 
I cannot wait till the door gets locked and both fighters are standing in the middle of the octagon. Because at the end of the night, we're going to know who the true pound for pound number one fighter in not only the UFC, but in all of mixed martial arts is going to be. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and land a spinning back elbow on the notification bell. Thank you and have a blessed day.